yeah and so we're back again <laughs> that's that's crazy huh code of the streets who's colder than me yeah I'm, I'm back again with another video be nice if I had a marker to work with Ooh. yeah a lot has happened um, and so what am I doing? Why am I making this video now? I'm making the video now because I am tied to these videos and I'm committed to these videos. And so in the process of working on bubble sort and insert sort and thinking about what that has to do with whiteboarding versus programming problems, I'm, I'm seeing the link right so um, you have a collection of objects first you need a guaranteed way to sort those objects absolutely guaranteed way and bubble sort does give you that and then after that collection is sorted however efficient bubble sort is right but it, it gives it to you it gives you the sorting after that collection is sorted you want to keep it sorted and insert sort is the process another rock solid 100 percent guaranteed way to keep putting elements into an already sorted list right so knowing that you're only dealing with strings and numbers yeah and that um the same would work with Bubble sort would also work with strings um, if the rule is uh, alphanumeric sorting. Then you have a way to not only sort any collection of all objects referenced by the rules of the sort, including um, referencing by ID if you're using an alphanumerical sort. But then you also have a way to insert new objects in. For the work that I'm preparing you for, that is absolutely appropriate, right? You have so when uh, your boss comes in and says Johnson, all of them ten million names, and you can you can let them know I got you, I got you, I know how to do it, I got this. I'm gonna sort them bubble sort if I have to although I'm going to look up some other sorting algorithms depending on the nature of the data but we of course always have bubble sort and then after bubble sort we'll keep it organized using some uh, insertion sort algorithm alright Johnson that's that's what I like to see I'm going to go back to my office and uh, run the Yankees into the ground I like hot dogs. What do you think about hot dogs? Mustard or ketchup? My uncle's a ketchup guy. I don't have, I don't understand those people. I don't trust them. I, so, so what we're going to do today is we're going to work on, well, we're going to work on reviewing those two algorithms because that's where I'm at today. So the other part of this series of videos, if you haven't been here before, is that Every time that I am preparing for whiteboarding exams out in the real world, I cut the camera on and I start filming uh, so you can see the process. And so uh, what have I been doing? Well, um, I haven't posted a video in about three weeks. So uh, most of that time outside of working on the servers that I work on during the day um, was built, um, was used creating a server on the AWS cloud using elastic beanstalk um, so I haven't had a chance to look at the whiteboarding problems Java and what my goal is is to connect all of those things um, also let's just uh, let's just let's start the process but, but before we do of course I have my <laughs> uh, I basically decided I'm always going to create a sketch or something. Something brings you in, you know, or something that says something, a message. So, for this one, I want to let you know, what is today? 
it's the 3rd of May 2021 so don't think these prices are etched in stone okay <laughs> but I start some online too to bring that but what that means I don't know maybe Skype um, looking at your code and seeing what I see or if you have zero coding experience but would like some one-on-one -on -one advice uh, to going through HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, looking at a little bit of React and Angular from a from a just a guidance perspective. Not I'm I'm not that I don't have it at my fingertips, but I understand what it is. Uh, Node, Express, MongoDB. Yeah, yeah. I, we could talk JavaScript um, and get you started and moving forward. Um, so yeah. Or, or just in tutoring, uh, working on a problem, you know, um, where we develop your skills, get you up to speed with programming. You know, you'll, you'll know pretty quickly if you've been watching, you know, the level of experience I have, whether it could help you or hurt you. So, and uh, you'll find out, I guess, in this video too. But, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I like to offer to people out there. You know, it's code of the streets, C code of the streets. So I had to have that. This is... I'm, I'm open to tutoring anybody out there on JavaScript, but the people that I want to reach out to right now, the people that I don't think are being just directly marketed to are my, my hood kids, uh, people from around the world that are in uh, backward situations economically, you're trying to find a way out. So that's, and I, you know, for me, it's urban. I'm from Baltimore, so this image that's etched in my mind that I sketch out real quick the cat on the corner <laughs> you know those are my people my heart and soul as a Jehovah's Witness I used to walk through the street trying to save their souls and I guess I can never stop right so um, I use them and their imagery to reach everybody right when I particularly yes what works out not if you if you don't have the circumstance where you know you could pay you know I don't know we got to figure it out but we're gonna get there right but this is what I want to start charging people for online tutoring so hit your boy up let me know in the comments you know we'll get back at you and we will help you where you are become the programmer that you want to become and that's the whole point of code in the street so we got to get the ball rolling on the cash. Okay, ka-ching. Got to get my crap little dollar on, okay. <laughs> so, um, now that I got that done, um, we're probably going to clear this board and get some algorithms going. The algorithm, a how-to to hack the system, mask your IP, hurry up and follow me. They can say, I swear they can't see. World War Three will be filmed in 3D. Yeah. Coat of the streets. Who's coated than me? Yeah. So. And I. What I noticed also is that some of my hip hop videos are linked <laughs> to Coat of the Streets, which is pretty awesome. So. If you want to see some hip hop videos and you want to see some art and some music, just click on the link, code to the streets, and you'll see a lot of stuff I was doing before I became a developer or someone who wanted to be a developer, right? Someone who wanted to become something. You know, art and music was going to be my way out, and it never became my way out. So, but in this, the process of trying to, um, maintain my art and music files, I became interested in computers. Um, realized that computers could also bring me that ka -ching. So then, just kept going. Got into school. Yeah. Alright, so, how are we going to review uh, what, or how are we going to review what we know? I don't know, because uh, all the job is gone, right? I don't remember I don't remember any of the syntax of it in Java, but we've already covered it, right? I know 
what the the Java is going to look like to some extent. I mean, I but really I'm, I haven't been thinking about the algorithm. And day to day life has been going on. I've been developing in uh, Elastic Beanstalk and learning about the AWS environment. Life has been going on. These projects have more potential. Building out a, uh, a UI and an Android application, but not so much Java specific syntax, but the logic, working on that. And then also doing some, some stuff, uh, configuring the API, um, create writing uh, calls in exp uh, with JS and Express, but still not. It's been problem solving that I've been doing. It hasn't been, <laughs> doesn't matter what language or anything, you're just digging through uh, problems, series of one by one, and coming up with solutions. So my syntax for Java is sloppy, let's put it that way. Right, right now, definitely. So where can we start? One thing that I know though, and that's why these videos are partially about education, is that the, how can I say, we've separated the mind from the body, but in reality there is no separation. You want to know what you know, you got to start, if I start writing these things again, just by hand, from right here, very quickly, I'll begin to remember the whole process. Um, so what, but to document, what do I remember about bubble sort? Um, I remember that with bubble sort, um, you have a collection, yeah, collection has much better terminology. You have a collection of, uh, numbers and you assume, and we're assuming that, uh, they aren't in order. Right. So yeah, I guess I have them all. And so they're not in order. And with bubble sort, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at any two any well for one I do believe the uh, bubble sort uses a nested for loop, if, uh, if I recall correctly. Uh, you're going to have nested for loops. And, uh, and you're going to have that nested for loop running inside of a larger condition that you're going to start back over again if that condition is not. Uh, if if something what didn't happen, if something didn't happen, then it's all going to stop. Otherwise, um, the yeah do while this condition is false, right? Uh, so you're going to be going over and over and over again, continuously going over this collection, however large it is, whether it's ten or ten million, right? Um, performing a nested loop and in that nested loop you're going to be checking the values of each pair to see if the one on the left is larger than the one on the right and let's say when you get to one like this then you're going to use uh, storage you're going to have a temp variable you know and then you're going to swap out uh, if the one on the left is larger than the one on the right you're going to swap out, you could you could do it either way, but let's say we put the one in the temp, put this in here, and then we're going to put seven in where one was. Right, so there's a seven over there, and then uh, I is going to get what was in there, in the temp. Um, which was one. So now I, and this is I plus one, I is going to get, has the value of one, and I plus one has the value of seven. And we're going to do that all the way up. And then we're going to start all over and do it again until there is no flip. And then bubble sort ends. 
So, yeah, that's, that's what I remember. And that's pretty damn good, actually. If you think about where, if you watched from before and you saw where I started, that's not bad. Especially since three, I haven't touched this stuff in three weeks, four weeks. You know, I'm, every time this thing cuts on is when I'm doing it. I would say I spent maybe 20 minutes considering what the topic for the next video should be and whether I should keep going in this direction. Because I, another thing I realized is that these are going to have to keep stacking. So from bubble sort to insert sort to the next one in the book is quick sort. You know, but I, I realized I needed to make a review video. And that is boring as hell, right? That's what I thought. And then I realized, but wait a minute, no. This is the reality of becoming the developer that I decided I was going to film and communicate with you while I do it. So... If you're, my video case, my videos are about education also in the process of memorization and education, yeah, to show people that this is what it looks like, even if it takes me twice as long to get y'all there, we're going to get there together, code of the streets, Co code of the streets, <laughs> yeah, uh, that, and that's it, so, alright, so, have a reviewed, um, bubble sort. What do I remember about insert sort? Yeah. Um, right, and that's the second question, right? So, so what I remember about insert sort is that, okay, let's, let's, this is a little trickier, right? I don't have it as good. Uh, or it's, I don't have it as solid in my mind. I just know, let's say I have a collection. Um, collection would already be sorted with insert sort. Yeah. Because that's one of the conditions of insert sort. That we have one sorted list. Is that we have one sorted list and one list that is good that is uh, it doesn't matter if it's sorted or not oh yes okay so you have one sorted list and one unsorted list if you once you get the first set of data Johnson I just I need to add another 20 million names to that list you figured out I, I need it by lunchtime you can, you, you know, that 10 million, you bubble sort it. Now he's going to add another 20 million. So insert sort doesn't care, but the, the, what's important is that one of the lists is already sorted. Right. And then what you do with insert sort is you compare for each element, for each one of these, you're going to compare each element, compare it with each element in the second set. So let's say 5, 3, 2, 6, Here. And that's the loop. You're going to compare with this one. And you're going to ask is, well, you're going to ask, is this one greater than this one, I guess? Uh, no. Is it greater than this one? I mean, yes. Yes, it is. Is, oh. Okay, you're going to check this one. Is one less than five? Yes. Then is one less than three? Yes. Is one less than two? Yes. Is one less than six? Yes. Is one less than zero? No. So then zero is going to go here. And how that insertion takes place? So zero, 
outcomes here. And how that insertion takes place, we learned, is part of the algorithmic work of uh, Java. You might want to know. Um, well, it would take that, that storage, that little storage um, loop that we used in bubble sort. That's another reason why insert sort is coming after bubble sort. Um, it uses that same little loop of, with the temp variable and i plus 1 and i uh, getting the value of temp. And then we come back out of that. But we'd start inserting these elements and rewriting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's in the, uh, and rewriting that list. So, you, you know, um, it's good to have a realistic estimation of uh, how long certain processes would then take in the real world, right? right? But sorting your data is clutch. Remember, there's only so many problems that you have to solve on any given day. And being able to guarantee that you can sort. Uh, Suddenly, bubble sort doesn't seem so much like a how many bubbles are in a bar of soap as <laughs> telling you, yeah, we can we can count it and we can sort those bubbles. Yeah. Something to think about, huh? Yeah, the code industries, maybe I'm calming the hell down. But you know, yeah, and that's part of also, you know, this process. I'm, I'm getting more accustomed to the idea that there are reasons why but it just requires people that why there's there are reasons why African American and um, and this is largely for African Americans. Uh, not only though, but look, somebody has to speak to, them. somebody has to talk to the streets like like fucking Alan, Alan Iverson or something like that. I got come up with some do rags and some chains, dunking on niggas. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like I said, like it's got to be a code of the streets. Co code of the streets. Somebody's got to reach these kids and let them know that if they want to, they want to get out. They're gonna have to know how many bubbles are in a bar of soap. <laughs> they're either gonna have to know that, or they're gonna have to be able to write bubble sort. So I recommend that they write bubble sort. Either that. Or Shut down your game like the NBA Lotto. So that's insert sort as I know it, right? So now what we're working on is not just the logic of insert sort or bubble sort, and that's what we were talking about last week, is that the focus of this video series is knowing it in Java. So that when I walk in for the whiteboarding interviews that I'm going to do for Java jobs because I think as people leave Java jobs I can pretty, get a pretty decent one because they, they will improve. I think the Java job is the one that you should aim for. It will improve your options and also prove that you know OOP. It will increase your skill set. Java's used in Android, even if everybody's moving to Kotlin still. It's the, it's the, Java's not going anywhere. So, the language in, in this review that I need to cover is Java. And we're gonna, and so if you haven't seen this before, all I'm gonna be doing is writing this thing. <laughs> I'm going to write this code out, and then I'm going to write it again, 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 until I have it, until it's etched in my brain, like a tattoo made of pain, right? Right in this, on my whiteboard plane. Yeah, I used to be your MC. Kicking lyrics like Bruce Lee. 
No, no, them cook folks with heat. Uh, so public. Void. Bubble sort. Eight. And I already realized now what we're going to learn here is how much Java I actually still recall. And it's also striking me how goddamn hard it really is to break into this industry in this sense. And then I'm not just doing this all day. You know, I'm also writing my own code at night. And during the day, I'm doing A plus, net plus, security plus type work just to keep the lights on. No, but it's all good. I'm loving it. I'm really loving it. I love working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's my thing. It makes me happy. Temp equals numbers. But I'm also realizing how much is in this, how much is in what we can do here, because I'm not just doing this for myself. I'm also covering some of this information for you because I want everybody to be up to speed on what some of this is. So it won't hurt me to review the basics. One thing that I've learned recently though is that as long as you're willing to troubleshoot and just problem solve that's most of the battle but the hard part is that for these interviews that's not what they want they want this stuff in Java I did it again yeah, so there you go. So here's the one thing. When I'm talking, it's hard to write accurate. I did that the first video. I didn't get the if statement. So that's exactly what I do in the interview. I probably forget the if statement. Right. And why that's important is because during the interview, you also have to talk. You gotta talk just like I'm doing right now. And I'm just realizing that while making this video, that making this video is the very best thing I can do to practice the whiteboarding. Because in the whiteboarding, I'm gonna have to be able to talk and write at the same time. They're gonna wanna know what I'm thinking while I'm thinking it. And it better be goddamn brilliant. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Okay, right. Let me write the code first. No. We want to know what your experience is. Where'd you come from, Will? You like programming? How's that snow treating you out here in Denver? <laughs> yeah. That's funny to me. Alright, numbers. I'm from Baltimore, man. I know snow. Bono snow like Eskimo snow flows. Numbers switched. Code of the streets. C code of the streets. Alright, true. Four. Oh, now I'm loosening up. Now we're loosening up there, Charlie. Now you're realizing what you're doing again there. 
throw your own apple the way you're supposed to. Yeah, put some pepper on it. While numbers switched. That was that condition that I was talking about that while this is true that there was a switch in values then we keep going in this ah, and interesting huh so now it makes me think about some of the other code of the street videos that we did and uh, what some of the errors were that I was uh, making and writing the code and talking about the code and thinking about the code from that first video I know for I know I would change my names of my variables like thinking out loud and writing that's it's hard parameters parameters yeah I know. Right. so when I'm at the whiteboarding experience I, while, while I'm doing the whiteboarding exam I should be looking to make sure that I have consistent names for all of my variables switched s's on the end right you gotta have consistent code um what is this well this is a method yes i'm confused before about whether something was a method or a class in java it had the class keyword there right um this is a method because uh, this is where it's public. It's, where it's a public method. Public can be pu uh, classes or methods, right? But this is a method. Uh, it's not returning anything. That's why the void is there. Um, that should be one of your first clues, right? Boom, just right in front of you. Like either the ret this is always where the return type is going to be in the method. That's the name of it, and uh, these this are the what it's taking. Um, argument of in of array of integers, numbers, um, boolean. There's a flag here. Numbers switched. That's what we're setting. And we're, uh, yeah, and we set it inside the do. Yeah, do, like I said earlier, that we do this while something is true or false. Right. Here, false. That number switch. We're going to do this. Well, first it's we're going to do and the value is set to false because nothing has happened no numbers have been switched right if in this process we find a value where on the right hand side it's less than the number on the left hand side then we're going to perform the swap in memory and then we're going to switch that flag to true right that means numbers a number was switched and then there's a lot more that we're doing in this oh there's not I thought it was a nested uh, four it's not a nested four for the bubble sort right if there's a condition in there right there is a nested loop there is a nested loop but it's not a nested four the nested loop comes from this loop the do while inside of there are the four the iteration over the fours the iteration over the um, the numbers array and also think about it here with insert sort you have two collections and let me say not numbers array numbers collection we'll talk about collections in Java more than arrays I would say right it's easier to deal with you don't use arrays that much in Java Right, because you're dealing with collections of objects generally in OOP, Object Oriented Program. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so, yeah. If numbers, yeah. So then this, if uh, the switch is performed, true. And um, while, right, and that the true, the conditional while depends upon a true value, right, right. You can't pick if this while is going to be false or true. That's why the only thing you can do is pick where you start. Right. 
and we're setting the value. So in other words, it's going to keep performing this swap. It's going to keep looking down that collection and performing that swap, swapping these values. Um, where the, the big where the big number, right, is on the right. Where, or, I'm sorry, if the value on the right is less than the value on the left, right? If the big number is on the left, right? If the value on the right is less than the value on the left. And maybe I need to say that over again. If the value on the right is less than the value on the left, then the swap is performed. Right. So, you gotta, we have a clear review of bubble sort, and I can feel that I'm remembering. Now what do I want? Well, the next goal in the process of memorization and review would be to write this over again. Right? But before I just start erasing, let's look at it again. Let's really try to memorize what's in front of me. So how do I break this down into parts? Well, I mean, I got a method. I got a flag. I got a do. I got to assign the flag. Sign the flag again. I'm trying to keep it legible. I got to assign that flag again, and then in my head, I got to write the while. Remember to finish right the while, and then the last brace. Now, <laughs> here's the part with the memorization part. If I'm looking, I just know at the end I'm supposed to have one, two, three is the while, and four parentheses. Closing parentheses. So I'm gonna map that out. Four closing parentheses. Because for us, the goal is memorization of a version of this and coming back to it continuously, learning how to write it in Java. The best way is to have a model, right? So this is what I need. So I know that I need to, I gotta break this into parts. I got a public method that doesn't return anything named bubble sort that, ha that takes as arguments an array of integers. Remember, so what, what do I have? I have a public method that doesn't return anything that's void named bubble sort. And what does bubble sort do? What does bubble sort take? It takes an array of integers that, as an argument, the name we're using is numbers. Boom. So, what does bubble sort look like in Java? Well, we're, we're using a public method that doesn't return anything named bubble sort that takes an array of integers as an argument. Let's uh, call the array numbers. Boom. Right? So then, that's the first part, the method. You see how I'm breaking it down into uh, parts that I can memorize so that when I do erase this, I can write it again 
with understanding not only of what the algorithm does, but its implementation in Java, which is what we're looking for. Java implementation, I want to show you that. That's the tool that we're going to use in this series. And then maybe grow into something else, but right now, <laughs> we're talking Java. Um, I want you on the side to be studying JavaScript and looking at the blockchain. Yeah. But prep this for your interviews. Alright, so well, once we have the that declaration and we know what it is that we're creating it starts to turn it into an object in our mind right um, a function uh, doing something a method a function machine you know if uh, and maybe this will help so I could slow down just a little bit for people that are learning some things here Let's say we have something like this. Let's say we have something like this. Should have more fun with this. All. The world looks mighty good to me. Cause Tootsie Rolls a roll, I see. Whatever it is, I think I see becomes a Tootsie Roll to me. Tootsie Roll, how I like the chocolate eat you. <laughs> alright, alright, so then like a. Alright, you got something like that. comes out. Comes out and well if I'm correct it'd be a line of bubbles. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's really funny. So then in that case, this would be bubble sort. You get it? And what is it taking? It's taking, a, this one is taking an array of integers. So actually, let's not confuse, let's draw the scale. So this little guy takes an array of integers. And that's going in there. Whoosh. And what's coming out? Perfectly sorted array of integers. Or actually, what's coming out according to the method? Nothing. Nothing's coming out. Oof. Nothing's coming out. Numbers. This array is sorted inside here now. Ka-ching! It's beautifully sorted. <laughs> and it's been mutated. And mutate it. It's 
paint, there is no output. But you see the process that I'm using to turn this code into something that is an object, something that I can hold for myself and then come back to the code. It's not so vague. And why does this matter? Let's take it back to the office. Johnson, I'm paying you $98,000 a year. Now, can you please sort those names for me? That 98,000 sound good, don't it? <laughs> right. And that's why you want to know how to turn this into reality in some way. Because you got to deal with this in order for computer to understand what it is that you're saying. <clears throat> so back in, it's good for me. to memorize what's going on. This is a representation of this. It, this thing is public. You can see it. It's visible. The method is known. It's a public function. It's void. It's not returning anything. Bubble sort is what it is. And it's taken in an integer array of numbers. Taking it in. And then it mutates that. It changes that thing. Ching, it checks it. Once it's done, then that's it. Now, if we wanted, we could return, if we had a return statement here, we could return the, an array or an, a copy of that array. But in this instance, we're just performing the algorithm on this. And this is a mutating algorithm. You'll find out later whether that's good or bad and why and when to do it. Yeah. But that's, this is what I need to know. Yeah, there's no way around it. I gotta learn it, and I gotta learn it in front of you, and I'm learning it now, which uh, documents the process, which I think is pretty cool. So I have the method. I gotta know that there's a flag in there. whole flag. A little golf ball there. <laughs> there you go. There's a flag in there um, that we're going to set and instantiate or hold a position in memory for it, but we don't set it yet. You don't want to set it. You don't want to create it new inside of each block. You got to create it here. The code has to have access to it, but be independent of it, of its initial creation and um, initialization. Yeah. Because there has to be a way to exit. The loop. So I have the flag. So I think of the think of the method. Think of the flag. The uh, the member variable. Or the instance variable. Excuse me. So there you go. That's. The, the member variables are for classes. Instance variables are for methods. So I have a member variable. <laughs> Good God. The mind. The human mind. I have an instance variable. This is not a class. This is a function. So this is an instance variable. 
Right. And there are rules with uh, whether that could be public or private. I, I can't remember. Something else to remember about Java. We gotta keep digging into our Java. That's something that I'm learning from this video, right? Even though I gotta write code and I, oh, it's hard to learn enough Java, but it's what I gotta do. Uh, so then, it's hard to learn more Java each day. Do, especially when you're writing code. Ironically, uh, so do number switch. We're gonna change. We're gonna assign the value false. So the method, the flag, and start the do loop, assign the flag false, and then I have the first for loop. Well, it's not a first for loop. There's only one for loop in this, right? And in that for loop, there's that if statement, the condition. If the number on the right is less than the number on the left, perform the swap. And set the flag. Yeah, it starts to go fast there. Right. And then set the flag. Yeah. So what do I have to do? <laughs> yep. Create we have a we have a function that doesn't return anything. It's named bubble sort. What it takes is a array of integers as an argument we call numbers uh, we're gonna create a flag for that function um, and then we're going to start something we're going to do this function we're going to do this uh, we're going to perform this logic while the flag is false actually so in order to do that we're going to assign the flag false and then for the length of the numbers of array for the length of the array if when we go through and the whole process is that we're going to go through multiple times over and over and over and over and over again but um, if the number on the right is less than the number on the left then we're going to create a place in memory uh, store the number on the right we're going to store the number on the right we're going to swap it out with the number of on the left the so number on the left is going where the number on the right was and then we're going to take that number that was stored on the right and put it where the number on the left was and then we're going to set the flag to true by setting the flag to true it tells us that we have to go through this loop again because at least one number uh, was switched and if that is the case then the we got to check to see if now the list is finally sorted so then we're just going to go back in to our do loop. But along the way, we're going to perform some swaps. Each iteration of the loop uh, will perform at least minimum one swap. Right. Until there are zero swaps, in which case um, this if statement is never entered because there's no numbers to swap. In which case, this flag never gets set to true. It stay, it, this reads it as false, where it was set at the beginning of the do. And so then the, the whole loop, the method ends. Uh, there isn't a return, explicit return here. But, yeah, because there's, well, uh, there's nothing to return. Uh, so then the method ends. And that is bubble sort method flag in flag uh, instance flag space created right. I don't know what I'm trying to say there, but we're si we're creating an instance of a um, in memory for for a boolean variable, but we aren't. Um, assigning it a value until we're inside the do loop. So I need to know the, uh, the specific Java language to describe that condition of instantiation, initialization, how you say it in Java. Um, I don't know yet. And then numbers switch. So the flag is 
is uh, given a value. The length minus one, right? The swap with temp value, make sure we don't add an E or something like that. Alright, make sure we don't add an E or, or that we remember to put the, uh, the type of the temp variable there because you have to reproduce this. Yeah, you have to write it. <laughs> right, but we'll sort dropping in the hole. Dropping it in the Uh, to do assign the flag, the for loop, the if, the swap, and then two and two. Two closers, and then the third one, put the while there, and then the last one for the, the function. Right. And what will Professor Grell say? He asked me, was I really trying? Are, really, are you trying now? Are you just... <laughs> are you bullshit? Right. I think I got it. I don't know. I, I, no. There's no way I got this memorized. Kind of. Kind of. Right. But way better than before. And this is the uh, first half of the process, I would say. Um, and I probably remember more Java than I think. But one last just look to try to memorize. And then we're going to take this away and see what we have. See how close we can get to reproducing that information. So, what do I have? I have public method that doesn't return anything that's named bubble sort and it takes an array of integers as an argument let's, let's say for instance we call it numbers right and I'm going to give myself a nice amount of space there's my closed in brace so then I have a, I know that bubble sort the implementation that I'm thinking of, I'm going to use a boolean flag. I need to know something about this, whether a number was switched or not. And I need to know why, whether a number was switched or not, because that's the heart of the um, algorithm of bubble sort. This is, you have to know if you perform the swap in one of your passes through um, your collection or your array, you need to know. You have, you have to track that. Um, so then, here's what we're going to do. Do while number switch is true, we're going to We're going to perform this algorithm while number switched is true. And what is that algorithm? What we're doing in here. Um, now, first we have to set numbers switched equal to false because if a condition, if the condition is true that we do would actually perform the swap then we're going to switch it equal to true and then we're going to find out we're going to hit this point where it was true so we're going to do the whole thing again if on the other hand we never swap a value then we're going to leave the whole method and that last pass of this where we don't perform the swap is that the, is the heart of knowing that bubble sort is complete. It's, it's complete to itself. Let's 
right that a little neater. So what is bubble sort? Right. Well, first, uh, there's a four. Four. Int i zero. We just have uh, i is less than or equal to numbers dot length minus one incrementing here. Uh, so I'm going to have another one. Yeah. Another one. Uh, you're going to have an if statement if the number on the right is less than the number on the left. If that's the case, and remember I had to remember int temp I can add an E if I want, but I got to stick with that, right? <laughs> if that's the case, then take the number on the right and put it in storage. Then take the number on the left. No, then you take the number on the right and assign it the value of the number on the left. And then you take the number on the left. assign it the value and tip then you increment your flag or not increment your flag you answer the question or you assign the value of number switch equal to true because yes, we did perform that swap if we found that. If we entered this condition and began to perform these processes, then yes, a number was switched. So we're going to assign that the value true. And then we're going to close our if statement. Right? And so. What did we talk about in terms of like when we had that code up the first time and we started drawing those arrows and mapping out what those things were? We talked about a method, we talked about a flag, we talked about a do, we talked about assigning the value of a flag, we talked about a for loop and an if statement. Um, we talked about one, two, three, four um, closing parentheses and I drew that circle there so I remember and also that the third one had the while um, in front of it and that the fourth one closed out the method so this looks pretty good to me this looks pretty good to me and if I were at the interview and I had to perform a bubble sort or they said write a bubble sort I feel like I have explained the algorithm, why I have chosen what I chose and created it the way that I did using a do while with a four. I'm sure there's a way to use a do it with a four, but this is actually beautiful, right? Because it does it for any length array. Um, there's, which is, would also be part of the problem of what um, you'd want to have as an algorithm that worked for a collection or an array of any length. 
This looks good to me. Uh, the only thing left for me to do, I'd say, then is to check. See if I got this right. And I feel pretty confident about most of it. Bubble sort, int numbers, booleans, number switch, do, number switch equals false. Forgot the semicolon at the end of false for int numbers is less than numbers that length minus one i incremented brace if numbers um, yep i plus one is less than numbers i brace and temp is assigned yes numbers i plus one numbers i plus one is assigned the value of numbers i um, numbers i temp Number switched equal to true. Two closing parentheses while number switched, and then the quote last one. Boom. The only thing that I missed <laughs> in this particular loop of it was that semicolon. But you have bubble sort right there. It's pretty cool. Haven't looked at any Java code in at least three weeks outside of changing the functionality of something in an Android app a few hours ago, about a day, day ago. This makes sense. This is the bubble sort part. So I'm going to say at this point, you know what? Alright. I have a fresh concept of bubble sort. One half of it. The other half of the video. I don't know if it's going to be the other half of the video, but so we're caught up on bubble sort. I'm going to take that away. I'm going to say, yeah, I'm happy with the bubble sort here. I guess it's half time. It's half time. Ding, 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 ding. It's half time. It's like that. You know it's like that. I got a him now. You never get the pen back. When I attack, there ain't an the army that can strike back. But let me not be a biter, because he did say I set it off with my own rhymes. Because I'm as ill as a convict who kills for fun time. <laughs> to me, that's, that's, that's the hip hop. Alright, so then let's talk about insert sort then. And then wrap up, my friends. Shall we? you implement the insert sort algorithm. So now that we have um, bubble sort memorized and fully understood in a Java implementation, then let's look at the second one that we covered, which was insert sort. And insert sort was the long video, right? It took three hours and I literally ran out of time right when I figured it out, right? Um, because this thing, oh, I only have three hours of, of video footage um, on these. Like this, look, video footage, hard to edit, to practice, never understood it, too impulsive, a deadly corrosive dosage attack when you be snow this to explosive postage. <laughs> but what we're going to do here is the same thing that we did before. Let's go over the insert sort. Put this information in, go over it by writing it by hand. The algorithm comes back to you, and you get some more practice memorizing and writing it on and out on the whiteboard until I have these things cold. I don't care how long this takes. It takes three years of documenting this process. I'm going to walk in with these things ice cold, and hopefully in the process, some people will come with me. Coat of the streets, coat, coat of the streets. Who's coat of the meat, coat, coat of the meat. Public, yep, if I remember something. And this is important to remember too, this statement takes up space. So let's write this like I need the space.
integer numbers. And that's pretty neat. Could be a little better. I'm going to keep it moving. I know that I got this second. I got that closing brace. I got the opener. I got the closer. Oh, yeah, let me write that. Alright, right, so then final. Yeah, I think that uh, what this really is about is about me trying my hardest to communicate with people that I think I lost. And you know, I'm look, I'm not immune to the politics of this world. And you know, certain arguments are true, like. Uh, Baltimore is a lost city, man, and it is it has been a Democrat-run hellhole. Right? I'm not gonna call it a plantation because it's not a plantation. That's offensive to the people who lived and died on plantations that never had freedom. But the Democrats haven't done a better, a good job. But there's no damn way on God's green earth. Republicans would have done any better. <laughs> but I, I'm just saying that to say I just want to reach out outside of politics and just be able to find a way to help people. Get them up to speed to the world that we're about to enter. You don't need to get these people jobs at supermarkets or as assembly workers. You need to get them ready for Web 3.0. You need to get them ready for robots that have spatial awareness. <laughs> Program the kill. We're talking Terminator, man. The new world order is here, bro. <laughs> Alright, so then I guess actually this will probably be the return statement. Let's get that. Get that out of here. Boom. Let's get that out of here. Dear Charlie. No, I mean, like, you know, yeah, and I guess I got time now. Like, I mean, like, uh, this is what this is about. Like, you don't know what can be born in these environments. They're, the Harlem Renaissance took place. You know, just because people were doing the right thing at the right time and teaching the right information, teaching people, sharing their experience and their wisdom. So I mean like, I don't know. I don't know what could come out of this. 
could be some uh, some old Wu Tang coding society that's born a code of the streets, you know. I just want to teach these kids using something as simple as algebra and pretty basic logic you can create anything create anything you your mind can imagine video games are nothing more than collections of bitmaps at least when I was a kid now I know that's way more but you can create those things the world is about to switch to a VR AR blockchain algamation where <laughs> where crypto is king, right, and robots are walking around. Like, just come with me. You know? So, how would I break this down, right? Second, so we, we understand bubble sorting, we understand now that we have the, the algorithm for sorting a collection of items, then now we got to keep that list sorted and we got to insert things into that list. And so here is the second major algorithm of insert sort. We're working on these two in the process of becoming a professional developer and creating whiteboarding algorithm videos for the streets. <laughs> uh, well then what do I have to say? I have to say uh, I'm gonna break this down the same way. This is a method. Right, and where I was confused when I created the first video was in its return value, which um, uses generics. Yeah, but it's a public, static method, so I guess a method of a class um, that returns um, list uh, of type integer, a collection. That gives you the answer right there of what you're using as a collection. It's named insert sort. Um, final, I still haven't learned why that's final. Yeah. Uh, I guess because it's uh, mem it's static and it's members of a of a class. I don't know, but it it takes list. It takes a final list of type integer numbers, right? And we're calling it numbers. Final list. You're declaring a sorted list, a new linked list, You're creating space for this sorted list. This new linked list collection of integers, of integer objects, or wrapped elements that perform auto boxing, wrapped elements, right? Class, classes that represent primitives, right? A class based representation of primitives and the values that we're storing, that we're using. Um, original list. This is just um, uh, an alias for this for loop so that we can use that continue statement when necessary for this collection. And these are instances of a uh, for each instance type integer in this numbers array and then we perform a f we have a nested for loop with the insert sort <sighs> i is less than sorted list dot size right so Right, so that's one of the things is that initially this sorted list, although we're linking bubble sort and insert sort, although we're linking bubble sort and insert sort, you don't have to have the bubble sort performed. You could have a list of uh, values 
in that and create a sorted list from this implementation. One by one, inserting the numbers in the position, in the correct position. Right. Or you could have the list that you bubble sorted as the sorted list. Right. But it doesn't matter. You would go by sorted list dot size, whether you're starting from zero, which this is, and sorting. Right. Or this already is a sorted list and you're adding a, a, a new list, a new collection to the sorted list, right? But if you're starting with two lists, at least one of which is sorted, even if the sorting is that there's nothing in it, <laughs> right? It's, it's pretty cool, actually. The nerd in me, like, yo, know, <laughs> how is this possible? How is this possible that we're floating around in the universe, floating on a rock in space, hur you're floating on a rock, hurtling, through space with these giant hydrogen balls trillions and trillions of miles away from you and this is true of all lists of all objects in that universe <laughs> and this is what is true of computer science is that you consider problems like that you come up with, they've come up with those answers, and it's your job to learn those. That's what I, I think is pretty fascinating. I guess I, I don't think I'm ever going to get these videos done if I'm always marveling at the beauty of it, but well, who knows? Let's see what happens. I am learning more faster than I thought, and I'm actually learning it, because if I just left it to not to making it and making it for you, then I probably wouldn't do these things. I'd just keep writing code, maybe in a business that way. But here, I get to do a little of both, I guess. Yeah. All right, so it's back to it again. Um, creating a sorted list. Uh, it could be starting from zero or adding whatever we want a list that's already sorted and we're adding the numbers list and into the mix and trying to get that into that sorted list but for the sorted list dot size right for we're going to go through once and if the value from that list of numbers if that particular value that we're on as we increment through that array or collection, if that value is less than the one at the position that we're at in this for loop, then we're going to perform the add. We're going to take that number that was in this collection and we're going to add it to where we are in the sorted list. And then it's going to it's going to add it to that position. So, insert sort is about position, behind the scenes, algorithmic work when we're talking about Java. And then, we continue to the next space in the list. Huh. Then we continue to the next space, an original list, right? Uh huh, yeah. And so we go to the next position in there and we check to see from the beginning, from, from where this is, we're still dealing with the first one, right? Right. <laughs> the first value in that. Because we haven't uh, incremented, well, no, we have incremented. We continue, so we incremented one, and we're dealing with the next 
value and go into the front of this list again to, to look at the second one. The second value in the numbers array to compare it with what is currently the first value in the sorted list. And then the, the third one. So what's really going to start happening is something similar to this. We compare this, and then we compare this, and then we compare this, and then we hop over, and then we compare this, and then we compare this, and then we compare this. And then we hop over, and then we compare this, and then we compare this, and then we compare this, and then we hop over. But you see that there's an order to each one of these being compared, to each one of these being compared, to each one of these being compared. And that's then we go over to that and then we go and then the list is completed and then uh, huh. and either the number in that second list its place is found inside the sorted list or it's added to the end because it's too big because we already know because the list has already been sorted and we've looked for its place in the list and if it's not in the front of the list and its place isn't in the middle of the list then it must be larger than any other number in the list so we add it to the back so by the time we finish this algorithm checking each of the numbers in the list that we added it's done this isn't like the do while where we keep going back over and over and over again because the list is already sorted it's finished the place of each element is known by the time we go over this list that we get and that is insert sort now the funny thing is I haven't even I haven't thought about it quite that way but that is actually what insert sort does. Yeah, it's weird learning this stuff in front of y'all. Right, because it's true. I mean, like, this is like what you do at home when you're eating popcorn and listening to Eminem or some shit like that. You don't, you don't film these moments for people so that they can see them. Right, but this is what I'll... And then, you know, you got to... Do your homework later, and you, but first you got to read the book, and you got to understand it. And this is me reading the book and gaining any understanding, and that's cool. That's cool. I don't think people generally document that, but I think this is valuable because this is what people that look like me have to do. Do it. Do it. Do it. Cope with the streets. Cope. Cope with the streets. Yeah, and so, you know, I, I do have to say, I don't think the playing field is fair, right? On one hand, they tell you, you're from a Democrat hellhole. How could, how could you become anything? Vote for our politicians. On the other hand, if you're from those Democrat hellholes, they say, you, people assume that you were part of the rioting or something, right? Or, you know, like you can't win. Like, like either you're from a Democrat run hellhole and so how could you know better right or you should know better but then if you should know better then who care what what difference does it matter what party runs it now, I'm not a Democrat but I'm tired of the politics out here I am an artist <laughs> I put it that way right most artists don't are not conservatives. I'm not a conservative. Yeah. Just want to just want to make sure my people get a chance 
Everybody says they got a voice, well, let's go over that voice. Right. This is what I want them to be talking about. I don't want them talking on critical race theory. I want them talking code. Yeah. When you write the right code, you, <laughs> you have the power to change the world. So, what do I need to do to memorize this? I need to know what it is, right? I need to know what I'm looking at. So I'm looking at a method. Right? I'm looking at... statement I'm looking at the add method and then I'm looking at continue I'm looking at two braces I'm looking at it's a lot right I'm looking at Add. So really I'm looking at add in front or middle and I'm add at the end. Right? And then I got one brace. I got one brace and uh return statement. Then I got the last brace. So let's say one return one. One brace. And then one brace. So I kind of organize the code, right? I organize the code into objects outside of all the, the nitty gritty syntax. I just want to get what it is that I need. Right? And then go down the list again. I need to know the method and its qualities. I need the list item. Or I need the list and what it its qualities. The labeled for and the syntax I'm gonna have to remember, right? I'm gonna have to remember how that looks. That it has a label with the semicolon and then the for, and that we're using the enhanced for loop in Java with the nested for that is specific to the sorted loop, si loop size. The size is a call of a method to get that value. And then there's an if statement in there. If that value, that number right there, and I need to know numbers on the left, numbers, the array is on the right. If that number value is less than sorted loose dot, sorted list dot get an I, then, Sorted list dot add is called, and that that operation occurs that is adding the number to the front of the list or somewhere in the middle. That this is the hocus pocus behind the scenes of how Java implements its list algorithms, the linked list, including insertion, um, and then I continue this for loop. Original list isn't a variable, it's a label for the for loop over numbers when it's being used by that enhanced for loop. 
got two brace spaces. And then underneath it, I have sorted this dot add. So we're add, this is what happens if there was nothing in the middle, then the number must be larger than anything else in the sorted list. So we add it to the end. There's a one brace return statement sorted list. And then one brace, the closer for the for the for the function. Um, sorted list. Only thing I'm un I'm unclear on is when sorted list gets the return is sorted list. Yeah, because we're still in here. We only leave once. Yeah. And that's at the end. We're adding it to the end. And we're going as long as numbers is. Right, so when we hit this, we only hit it. It's one and that one and done. Going straight through. We either find the place for the number or we add it at the end. We either find the place for the number with insert sort or we add it at the end. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Sit my Batman juice. So at this point, then, and this one is a little harder. I like these videos because they make me go. You gotta push, right? It requires that you push in order to get shit done because nobody wants to see somebody sitting around. Uh, so Basically, I need to remember some of this syntax in order to get this right, right? And I gotta remember my Java syntax. So public, it's it's a static method of the class list integer, generic syntax. The name is insert sort. That's what we're working with. So remember that. Uh, it's final list integer numbers, and then this is also final list integer sorted list. It's hard. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. New linked list. Right. It's a new linked list. All right. Original list is the labeled for. Original list for. The label for. Integer. Number. Numbers. And this is the part of it. This is the meat. The algorithmic part. Right here. Um, so let's go back over what we need to know up here. Public static list integer. Public static list. Integer insert form final list integer. Just remember this right here. List integer. List integer. List integer. There's three. Map amount spatial. Two on the first, one on the left, and then linked list with the diamond and the, the empty uh, braces. Right. You see that grouping. And that's a mental model, right? So you can kind of turn that into an object. Four corners, with one of them having a little bit different wording. Linked list, diamond. Instantiating, new. Sorted list. This is the list. This is the sort. But this is the heart of what we're working on. Of. And then you can get into some to start thinking about your looping logic. That the next step is that you have this looping structure. One of which the outside uses the alias, and the enhanced loop. The inside uses for syntax. Boom. Right. So let's look at it again. We got the four corners with the link list being right here in the right hand bottom and then the nested four loops one of which uses the enhanced the outside the inside uses very straightforward iterative this is the word iterative uh, language we're telling it specifically what, what, what we want um, Notice that there's three methods of the class that get used. So you might want to think about that now. I want to think about dot size. I want to think about dot get. I want to think about dot add. 
for the sort list. I need to know that we're going to be using those three methods in this implementation in Java. Just think about that and it'll give you something that you could grab. Um, also lets me know I need to think a little more about how some of my Java methods work. But also know that unlike dot length, dot size is where the method is being used here to get that value. You're calling it and getting the value. It's not a property of the numbers array. It is a called function whose value is returned when we go into that loop. I gotta ask you something. This, this is all compiler stuff. A lot of this behind the scenes stuff that Java's doing, right? To get you those values. So, um, so we're but size get add one, two, three lines. So if you want to think of it as size get add, you should know that size is going to be on that first line. You're going to be using get in the second line and you're going to be using add in that third line right so what are my techniques for memorization when i do find a pattern size get add i'm going to remember that size get add i'm going to also try to make it special in my mind maybe by <laughs> creating a square um something useful to lock it in to make it real right the mind to the hand Wax on, wax off. I want you to connect yourself to this process of whiteboarding. Get yourself a whiteboard. I don't think I've said that yet, but find yourself a whiteboard. Mail it to the wall and start working on this stuff. You can buy these at Walmart. 20 bucks maybe. 20 bucks versus 98K. Think about it. All right, so this is where we are, where we're starting to map this and, and gather data and patterns also that we can use for when, not for our day to day coding because we won't, but for this prep for the whiteboarding interviews. So then I'm going to go back to the top and go over it again. I got my four corners using list integer, but the, the bottom right one uses linked list with the diamonds and the parentheses. I got two for loops. One of them is an enhanced one with the name original list. And I use size get and add. Size to determine how long we're going to iterate get to get the value and compare it to the one in the list that we get from the method and add to add a value. That number from the numbers array, we're adding it in the position where we are inside of the for loop. Then we're going to continue the original list. Otherwise, two braces, we're adding the number to the end of the sorted list. We're adding it to the back. At the very end, we're just returning the sorted list. Am I ready? No. <laughs> am I ready? No. But am I... Do I kind of have an idea? Yes. And I think I'm going to be surprised at how much of this I still memorize. The hard thing now is that I haven't memorized the names now of these. And you don't have to have them memorized, but it's harder when you're in the interview to come up with that's just a whole nother step coming up with uh, names for these you you're not inventing insert sort so why don't you just you none of this is you're inventing so why don't you just use the names that you see original list sorted list original list and in a way if you see now, this kind of has meaning of original list and sorted list. 
So the original list is I. Uh, in this implementation, the book is considering the numbers, the one that we're handing in the original list, and we're getting a sorted list from somewhere. But, you know, you could just as easily think that this was the original list, you know, and call this to be sorted or whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. The, what matters is the logic of the algorithm. This list in some way must be sorted even if there are no elements in it. Is an empty list sorted? <laughs> if a tree falls in the woods and there's no one to hear it, does it make the sound? I guess that's what you're paying me for. I'm going to answer that question. I guess here, an empty list is a sorted list. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it away. Size get add method list. Yeah, method list labeled for, nested for. Get size get add. Yeah, this is tough. This is a tough one. I don't know if I'm going to get this the first time. I got to be honest. That really remember all of it at all. Let's see what we wind up with and how close we get and what we learn along the way. Yeah. It's funny this uh this dream seems farther away now and it seems farther away even though I've been doing more programming and more work than ever before. But at the same time, I learn this stuff pretty fast and it surprises me. So let's see what I can remember of what was there. I remember public static list integer. This is This is the second corner of the four corners list integer. Um, it's not, yeah, list integer numbers. Sure. 
end statement, right? Where this is let's get the that we're returning a sort of the sort of list, and then there was this four ending, yeah. All right. So that original list in that is a four statement, and it follows the rules. It I. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough, huh? Code of the streets. Code, code of the streets. Mm. Yeah, I was just thinking about some of the rhymes that I used to think about all the time. Rob schemes, 
you know, when you uh, when you work on songs, you spend time you spend time sitting there listening to the beat, listening to the music, listening to the words, trying to figure out what the song is saying, what story you could tell, and you know, you have the song laid out, and you got so many bars, and sometimes you'd have the hook before you had the verse and so like on the page you might even write the the hook down the page so that later on you could go back into the verse and be like she feels the tension and my attention what's on my mind I don't need to mention she's a mirage I'm seeing stars I believe in love like Santa Claus and the hook might be close to me like she's supposed to be on my life like Joe see but I don't believe in love you know so you got different things coming up and you're writing words in different spaces to try to get the whole thing captured and this kind of reminds me of that you know the creativity and well, but also the memorization because at some point you had to memorize the song and have it down cold so you could walk into the booth, do your doubles, and when you're doing doubles, you hear your voice a second after the recorded version. So you gotta say your words ahead of the recorded version to get the doubles right and tight, and you do it over and over and over. There's some interesting parallels between programming and creating music or creating art. But what I think is that this is pretty close. I don't know if it's accurate. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. But this is pretty close. So let's see what we got. So yeah, that was backwards. Continue original list, sort of list size, and number. That was final. List integer, sorted list, new length list. Like list integer, insert, sort, final list integer, numbers. Continue. Sorted list dot add, sorted list dot size this is supposed to be number one okay so this if and then that four comes and then that four right and then there's this brace, the return statement, the sorted list. Yeah, one brace, the return statement, and one. The if statement, the for, this statement, one, return, one. So, that's pretty close. That's pretty close. Right, so in this process, right, of uh, of covering that code, working on the insert sort algorithm, me, William Parrish, floating on a rock, hurtling through space, winking in and out of existence quantumly. <laughs> dreaming the big dream what what do I coach myself to do you know if I was Allen Iverson shooting free throws I probably shoot one more free throw at least at least one more because I screwed that up right here so did I fix this? I don't think I fixed that. I think I think I said I need to fix that, but I didn't fix it. And you know the thing about people that become successful is that they work hard. 
So I should at least write it one more again. Sorry for the chopped off head in the video. I'm working on my presentation of this and trying to figure out the best way to do it. Get out this dungeon I'm in. Right. Do code of the streets in a place that is visually appealing. But yeah. I'll say I got way more of this than I thought I would. So let's see if we can get it right this time. Public static. You got the four corners. You got two four loops. Original list. This is an int. Alright. Number sort. Here it's I. Just remember that the number, and here's number, another pattern. Then a physical pattern to remember outside the size to get in the add is that in these statements, numbers at the end, so whether it's I in the middle or sorted list as a dot size, number's going to be in the back. That array. Or no, that element, not the array. Sorted list, return, sorted list. So I think we got it. I don't know if we got it, but I think I have just jumped it really quick. I am looking to finish this. So, public, static, list, integer, insert sort, final. Into integer. Final list. Integer. <laughs> I just thought for a second that maybe I hadn't pushed record. Um, final list. Integer. I'm sure I'm going to do that one day. And do that. Oh man. numbers right and then final list integer sorted list is a new linked list dominant in the front she gonna sing with the gangsta beat. Ooh, 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 ooh. Right, boom, 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 boom. Let's wrap that up, right? Um, I got, the next thing I got is original list. Original flavor, son. And that is a for loop. It's an enhanced for loop. Instantiating an instance of an integer object number for the numbers array or a collection of numbers four. Yeah, you know that that we just went over that. Uh, that the return statement is one brace one. So what are we returning? We're returning the sorted list. That's Ashton Stone. Uh, what do we got here? We got a for loop. It's a normal for loop. Int i is equal to zero. Um, sorted list dot size i plus plus. That right here. That must be the one that goes here. I still don't know really. <laughs> I still don't know, but let's see what we get. Um, this is the nest of it. If.
sort it with dot add uh, number continue original list. Sort. I, think was, I think that was the bubble sort thing. I forgot a semicolon. <sighs> All right. Yeah. I mean, I do think that that's right. I think that that's right. I mean, like, all right, so if I was in a whiteboarding interview, what would I do? And I'm trying to get a job for, with IBM, I'm probably going to check again, right? So public static list energy. This is what I'm returning. Insert sort final list of numbers, right? Final list integer sort list new linked list boom four that looks good and then in there dot size huh. is it minus one? Minus one. Is it minus one? Ah, uh, is it minus one? That's the question. I don't think it was minus one. I think uh, that was a ray dot length minus one. I'm thinking of the uh, bubble sort now. It's creeping into my brain. All right. But there is something else to think about that this dot size is going to give you the right amount of loops, iterative loops. Whereas if you did, well then why is it minus one? Four. Because we're just doing less than, we're not doing less than or equal to, right? Right? Dot size. Just specifically less than. Or less than, and then the element in that position that we're looking at, right? For that many times, yeah. For however many long times this is, for the size of that, yeah. So think through the logic. For for as many times as there are elements in this list, we're going to perform this inner loop. We're going to get those elements in our. It's not minus one. Otherwise, we'd be leaving something off the list, right? Yeah, I think we're going to check this. I don't know if this was capital or not. I'm not going to worry about that. Looks like list integer, insert sort of prime list integer numbers, list integer sort of list, new list, list, original list, it wasn't capital, for integer number of numbers, for an I. I is less than sorted list dot size not minus one. I if number is less than sorted list dot get I sorted list dot add I number continue original list two braces sorted list dot add sorted list dot size comma number one brace return sorted list insert sort completed. Yep, and in real life. You do it one more time, maybe. 
you know, I think if I was practicing for an interview that I actually had, you know, I might do it again, write it over. But for now, we're just once again gathering information, reviewing. So now, what can I say about the previous videos that I made in this series, including the information for bubble and insert, is that, and what I've learned about whiteboarding in general, um, is that it's hard to write and talk. <laughs> yeah, it's real hard to write and talk accurately. So you better start practicing as soon as you start watching these and you go over your own problems and implementations. Start talking out loud to nobody or start making your own videos because I find that this helps. Otherwise, why would I talk out loud? But when I'm making my videos, I'm talking to you, so I'm talking out loud to try to keep you entertained. Um, let's explain your logic. Check your syntax, right? Look for semicolons. Um, look for changing variable names. Um, check for neatness. Understand the difference between the one-off issue and whether things are final and why. I still haven't had a chance to look some of that up. And it will be useful going into the future. Also, when you do record your videos, you see how you learn. Like after this video, I'm not going to do nothing but watch this video to once again reinforce it. And I have all the other previous videos. So I recommend that you start making these videos yourselves, recording your process, and then make it available to the world. Um, there's going to be more information coming from me as to why um, I created some of the things that I created and what ultimately I'd like to see. Uh, just remember, $30 an hour, you know, this is what, if anything, like I would, we could go over some of this stuff that we already covered in the video. If you have any questions about what we're talking about, there's so many topics that we can go over, um, things that I could help you with. And I'd say my studying time is worth that also. You may have some problem that you're working on, you need uh, someone uh, to look at with me. Yeah, well, I'll look at those problems directly with you. You get a second eye. You know, there's so much talk. I want to say there's just so much talk out there about doing things for nothing, for cheap. Use free code camp, all those things. Use all these articles out there. Build things yourselves. You don't need a teacher. You don't need a guide. And what part of life and where in the world do they do that at? Except right here with this coding. And usually the people selling that are the people who came home and had food, clothing, shelter, and parents that had education. It's like, don't listen to any of that. Find some people, study with them, work as teams. One of the biggest flaws and one of the ways that black students, this is documented, they fall behind in school is because they don't study with other people. They don't, they, they never learned that you study in groups and then you take your test. So I want you to find some people out there, or hit me up, right? We'll go over this information. My, now my time is money, but I am available. Um, at the end of the day, your success is your success, and you have to generate it, and you have to sacrifice. The question is, do you want it? You know, I can only I can show you the door. You're the one that has to walk through. Code, do this stretch. Code, code.